So if you're looking for a room which gives you a lot of options in customization, is smooth enough for your day-to-day -day activities, and also takes on the heat from your gaming experience, then you should seriously check out Havac OS because I've been using it for seven days and I think the results are surprising. And without wasting any more time now, let's start the video. First things first, let's talk about the bloatwares present in this room. I must tell you that every room that you will download and every room that you install, if it is a custom room, more than 90% of the times, it will not have any bloatwares. So all these applications that you're seeing in front of you is either installed by me or belongs to a Google Play service like Google Play, this one. Besides that, everything else is being installed by me and it comes with very basic applications like dialer, messaging and those things. Rather than that, you would not see anything. So basically, you will not even get any kind of personalized ads or ads at all. Now let's talk about animation smoothness. Let me tell you one thing here. The first time that I installed this room and I opened it up, while scrolling, I felt like the screen was overclocked. So I checked and it was not. So basically 60Hz panel and still fastest 60Hz panel. So as I already told, scrolling is super easy and so is the application switching between them. Every application that's being switched, all the animations are super nice. Like this room does not have any battery issues unlike Pixel Experience Android 11 beta. Then scrolling between them, no jitter. The phone does not get warm, which I still have to cover in the battery review. But as far as the animation goes, believe me, if you install this on your phone, you would not complain. And if you do find some jitter and lag, let me know in the comment section below, because so far I have tested it. Literally no frame drops at all or any animation drops. Now let's talk about the customization options. And this is where the things get interesting. Unlike Evolution X, Pixel Experience, as we saw in the last video, didn't have any special option where you can have the customization options. And that was a speciality of Evolution X. Now, just like that, this ROM also has configuration center where you will find every customization tweaks all in one place. That's super nice to have. So starting off with the status bar, you can customize the clock, logo, brightness control, double tap to sleep, network speed monitor, carrier label, then battery icon, percentage icons and everything else related to the status bar. Then you have quick setting where you will be finding all the options related to quick setting menu here and you can customize the number of icons shown, smart pull downs and quick pull downs and all those things. Now if you look at lock screen you will have double tap to sleep, quick settings, information charging for the lock screen customization, ambient display you can turn on, off, double tap, pick up all those options, hand wave, pocket, everything is here. You can even change the brightness of ambient display. Then you have gestures where you can control three finger screenshot, check quick torch, check, then power menu. You can customize what all shows, advanced reboot is shown or not and all those things, device control. Device control does pop up here, but I tried adding my smart device and it's not being able to add. So that's a bug I think. Then quick open camera, you can do that too. Notifications, you can enable the edge lighting, heads up and kill app button, noisy notifications, disable them so that you can have more control over them. Then you have battery saving options where you will have the options to perform some operations which can increase the health of your battery like blocking sensors when they are not in use. And in miscellaneous you have the gaming mode where you can customize if you are playing a game what should happen like dynamic mode that automatically adds the games as you install them on your phone then in gaming mode you do you need an indication or not then ringer should change or not maybe vibrate do not disturb silent disable automatic brightness and block notifications if you have to those things are present in gaming mode then wake up device is the option if you will plug in the charger it's gonna wake up your phone and charging animation if you turn it off on depending upon how you want it then finally you have the about section which does not have anything to do with customization but in fact it does tell you about the team that worked on havoc os to make it so smooth and customizable now let's talk about the camera so this room also comes with a default camera application installed so no g apps no nx camera but a default one which will restrict you from using your other two camera lenses which are present on the back of your phone so basically you can only click in one mode for photo and you can switch to video mode to make a video and then front camera will work so it's a very basic one if you want you can always install your nx camera link to which i will make sure to drop in the description so that you can go there and click on there for android 11 build but rather than that yes it's pretty much normal and i'm gonna sharing you some samples of the photos that i clicked using this camera application so that you can judge and have an idea about how crappy or how good this camera is 
So let's talk about the battery here. Unlike the last time that I was testing Pixel Experience Android 11 build, I had a very horrible experience where I had to charge my phone 5 times in a day and yet was not able to make up throughout the day. This ROM is not that. It's very stable, the battery usage is very much optimized for your day to day life and with one single charge it lasts around 24 hours or more depending on how aggressive you use and screen on time will be around 5 and a half hours or so. Then we have smart charging option here which I last saw on Evolution X. So the way that this works is you have to set the minimum battery level and the maximum battery level. So whenever your phone drops below the minimum battery level and your phone is connected to the charger, it automatically starts charging. But once it reaches the maximum battery level, which in this case is 80%, it will automatically stop charging even though the charger is connected to your phone, which is super nice to have because it's going to help a lot of people who literally put their phone on charge at night and wake up in the morning with an overheated phone. This is going to prevent it. Now let's talk about the gaming performance and before we actually start the gaming test, let me show you something here. So if you have seen people do gaming test on phones, they close all these applications before launching the game so that the RAM management of the phone gives complete attention to the game, which obviously will increase the performance. But that's not how we as a normal person do it. So we usually have background applications and then we open the game. So here I've already opened a lot of applications in the background you can see here. And now I'm going to open the game to test it out how this is going to do. So before I actually begin, I would like to show you the settings that I'm playing on. So graphics, so the very high graphics and max settings with everything enabled here and the BR mode is set on dynamic. That's how this game is going to be played. Going to multiplayer and clicking on start. So this is a different mode. I haven't played this match before. So I've got to see what's this all about. The phone's body temperature is literally not even increasing a single bit. It's really cool the way it was when I was using it normally. Phone's performance is really surprising. Temperature is not yet increasing. And you can see there is no frame drops. No lag. This is on maximum settings and I haven't ever played this map before. But I'm enjoying it, the phone's temperature is not increasing which is one of the best things because when you're playing game, you seriously don't want a warm heat on your hand that would make it a bit uncomfortable to touch. Let me know what you felt about the gaming performance of this ROM but for me it was super smooth and didn't even warm up the phone at all. And when you're gaming on your phone and if it is not getting warm, your processor is able to perform very nicely. Which is why this ROM I think is quite advantageous when it comes to that. Now let's talk about the bugs here. So bugs are not much, there is only one bug which I find very irritating but is there, yes, the lock screen bug. So basically when the screen is locked, I want to unlock it, I keep putting my fingers on the fingerprint and it just doesn't want to unlock. So in order for it to work, I literally have to turn it off, turn it on again and then try again and if it doesn't work, I have to do that again multiple times. So at times I become so irritating that I swipe up and put my key instead of my fingerprint so as to unlock the phone. That's one thing. Second thing, I thought of fixing that, maybe they would have fixed it in system updates and searched up for updates. Now if I search up on update, you will see system update is being shown there, right? But if I tap on it, under system it's not present at all. So I was not able to find where the system update of this ROM was because I've checked on developers option and even here, it should be officially here present, but it's not there. So basically, I'm not able to search up for the update of this room. I have to manually do it from their own website. So that concludes today's video. Hope you really enjoyed watching it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below or reach out to me on my social media handles, which are shown on the screen. And I'll be catching you guys in the next video next week. Until then, I'll catch you guys. Peace.